Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Barry at Moss Pond and Gun here in Jonesboro, Georgia. Uh, just want to do a quick little video for you today. We're going to talk about some popular uh, options for guys that are wanting 9mm. Uh, we do these top five gun videos all the time where we talk about, you know, we, we pick five guns that, you know, we think fall into that field uh, pretty well. So today this is uh, five 9mm um, handguns that we think everybody should have. Um, of course there's a wide variety of them out there. Uh, there's probably more 9mm uh, pistols in the world than any other caliber, uh, so it makes the choice all that much harder. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get uh, going down the line here with our five. Um, this was actually a pretty hard decision because there's just so many of them out there, and the 9mm uh, is such a, pow uh, a uh, popular cartridge out there these days. Um, it really is a tough decision, but one of them that we chose was the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield 9mm, little single stack. A uh, very handy little gun, good everyday carry gun. Uh, you know, we did a video on this gun, and um, excellent gun, shoots well. Uh, Barry, what do you think about it? Well, the gun is uh, the gun is striker fired, but it does have a affirmative safety. Like Glock calls it an affirmative safety. So if you're into that, that's fine. But we did a video on this gun, of what was it, about six months ago? Yeah, it's been a minute, but, well, um, but yeah, we got a, one of the initial This ones gun out. is fantastic. I'm not impressed with guns very often, but this shield... It's a nice carry gun. It's slim. Uh, it is. It is. It's sleek. It feels good in your hand. This gun is nice, man. And I'm not impressed with guns very often, but that one impressed me. Yeah, I have to admit, I'm, I'm the same way. You know, I don't really buy into all the hype when new guns come out. But this is one that I, I took out, and I definitely decided that this is a keeper. Um, I know there's a lot of concealed carry options for nine millimeter handguns out there. You guys know we're a big fan of the Glock 26 and uh, similar guns, mm -hmm. but uh, at the end of the day, I, I think this is a solid contender, and uh, if you got to narrow it down to just five, um, this is definitely a good option. Mm -hmm. uh, let's roll down the line here, Barry. Why don't you tell them about this uh, other Smith? Well, this other Smith is the, uh, this is the new version of the Smith & Wesson uh, SWVE. This is an SD9VE. Now, this gun was a clone of a Glock. It takes apart the same way. And uh, from what I understand, that uh, Glock sued them over this weapon, and they have to pay Glock nine dollars for every one they sell. Hmm. That's a okay. patent infringement. Uh, but this gun right here is built just like a Glock, fires like a Glock. Uh, it has no affirmative safety. You don't pull the trigger, the gun will not fire. This gun is totally drop safe. You can throw it against a brick wall, just like a Glock. It will not fire unless the trigger is all the way to the rear. Well, one of the nice things about this particular gun also is the price. Um, yes. These guns can generally be had for really reasonable rate, anywhere from between you know three thirty nine to three sixty nine in that ballpark. I mean, they're well under four hundred well, bucks. Generally, it's one hundred and fifty dollars cheaper than a Glock. Generally, um, Glock. of yeah. course, it's it's hard to adhere to that price point all the time. I mean, if you see this uh, video three years from the date it was made, then obviously, yeah, the price might be different then. But um, they are very uh, fairly priced guns. Uh, the initial versions of this gun, I wasn't very impressed with. They have very heavy triggers. You know just really crude construction compared to the later generations but as they went on and um and and developed this kind of gen 2 version here it really is a nice handgun it points well the trigger is decent uh you know comes with two or three mags so it's definitely a good buy for the money uh, i know right now a lot of us are very short on money um a lot of people don't have quite as much disposable income as they'd like to see this time of year especially with the holidays being right around the corner but uh, if you give us a call, I mean, we'll be happy to fill you in on more information about this. Or if you want to come by the shop and check them out, um, they're definitely excellent guns. So, well, you know, I would definitely, you know, recommend one for somebody that doesn't want to spend a lot of money. In closing on this gun, though, the old Sigmas, you had to get an adapter to turn it to a Picatinny rail. This has a space from finely wised up. Yep. And they put a standard rail on here. Any accessory that fits a Glock or any standard rail will go on the new gun. But this is a nice gun. I've only seen one of these in my lifetime break. Only one. Yes. That is a, that's a nice little gun there. Of course, we're coming up to the Glock 17. Absolutely. That's a great gun. The Glock 17. Yeah. This is the one that started it all in 1985. Now, um, this is one of my favorite guns. I do prefer the smaller Glock, the Model 19, to this gun, but this is, this is what started it all for Glock. Now, people think it's called a Model 17 because it holds 17 rounds. No, it was Mr. Glock's 17th patent. He was a tool designer, and this happened to be his 17th patent that he secured. So it's a Model 17. I don't know where they come up with the other numbers, the 23, the 19, 
I don't know where they came up with that. But uh, anyway, you got some comments on that, would you? Well, I mean, I, I like the Glock, and there's not really a whole lot that can be said about a Glock because it's been said in so many other videos around YouTube and then in our videos. I mean, we like Glocks. All right, I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a big fan of Glocks. Um, you know, their merits are definitely out there. I don't think anyone's going to, um, you know, say otherwise about their merits. Um, I do think they are priced a little high for what you get. They are a good quality gun, but there are a lot of... Um, a lot of things that really don't get added into the gun design that to me would merit the price. I mean, there, there's no reason why this gun should cost any more than the Sigma. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's just my opinion. I do like the Glock and I have no problems with them. They shoot good. They're very reliable. I mean, that whole song and dance, you know, they're out there. Um, I would say that from a standpoint of a range tool and a, a good combat handgun, you're not going to go wrong with the CZ-75 variant. Um, the CZ-75 is really an awesome gun. Now, this is not a CZ. This is actually one of the uh, Shark FCs. Mm -hmm. They're put out by this uh, Canic, basically. I know that's kind of a mouthful there, but they're Turkish-made CZ-75 copies. Mm -hmm. All right, the CZ-75 is awesome because it's an all-metal frame, like a 1911, and the way that the slide and frame are cut, instead of the slide riding on the outside of the frame, it rides on the inside of the frame. Now, it may just be that it's a slightly different way of... Uh, making it but in my opinion it provides a lot more rigid action so that there's less flex with everything you get better accuracy um, the overall feel of the gun is outstanding obviously I'm a very big fan of CZ handguns I've got a couple of 75s we're gonna be doing videos on soon a 97 and 45 um, I've got one of the PO7 uh, duty models so um, I'm definitely a big fan of the CZ uh, family of handguns um, I've, I've always been a fan of that particular gun the interesting thing about checkmate service guns is that they don't follow patents like U.S. guns do. So anytime a comblock country develops a gun, anybody's pretty much free to copy it as much as they want. So that's why you have the Turks making a CZ-75s, you have the Italians making them, you have you know EAA, all these different companies, Tangfolio, EAA, Canic. Um, there's so many CZ-75 copies, even the, uh, the Baby Eagle pistols are nothing more than a 75 copy. Now, they're awesome, and there are some things that kind of add to them, but at their heart, they are a copy of the 75 in several aspects. I think the CZ-75 is one of the finest handguns ever made, and uh, that's saying a lot, but I really am a fan of CZ. Well, the CZ, if you, if you fire a Glock like this, it has a real snappy recoil. You switch over to a CZ, it shoots smooth as silk. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. In fact, you, uh, the recoil is nothing like a Glock. Now, uh, the, this is not a CC-75, we don't have one to show you, but uh, the late, great Jeff Cooper, who was 45, 1911 all the way, yeah. he said if he was forced to use a 9mm, he wanted a CC-75. Well, they're great guns. Um, I've shot the 85 combat model, like that gun a lot. The 75 is an excellent gun. Um, if you're going to pony up on a real CC-75, try to get one of the early imports. Um, those guns are outstanding. They're very well made. Not saying that what CZ's bringing in now isn't good, but some of the early imports, they are really just beautiful guns. They're very well made, smooth actions, excellent triggers, and uh, trust me, if you ever get to, um, to spend a day on the range with a CZ-75, um, in terms of just sure, uh, pure shooting pleasure, you're never going to want another gun. That's great. Last one there. Well, now this is a Ruger P95. This is probably the best selling 9mm in, in the whole country now. Uh, it's polymer framed. It has a uh, it has a hammer drop safety, decocker, double action, mm -hmm. 15 shot magazine. Now we don't have any new of the, the new of these in the stock right now. This is a used gun, but we could sell probably two or three of these a day if we had them. Any yeah. gun like this and this that sell between 350 and 400 dollars, they fly off the shelves. They do. They do. When people um, get up around five something for another gun, they start hesitating a little bit. Like Eric said, money's tight right now. Right. And either one of these guns will serve you well. That's right. We know the the Ruger P95 was probably one of the first uh, you know guns of its type that I ever shot uh, growing up. I guess in my gun career, or my my gun knowledge, you know, and, and kind of coming up and learning about guns. And I tell you what, it's probably one of the most accurate nine millimeter handguns it's I've very ever accurate. fired. Very accurate. Um, they're accurate. They're reliable. 
they are a little bulky. Um, the ergonomics of them are, are definitely not quite as modern as what you would expect out of some of the other guns that we've shown, but um, the P95 is definitely a staple firearm if you're looking for a 9mm. Um, don't, don't overlook it. Um, it is a great gun, extremely accurate, reliable again. Um, I'm not a big fan of the safety itself because the safety on it is just kind of big and bulky and it can really catch on your clothing when you're carrying it. Mm -hmm. Also the fact that it's a hammer fired gun, I mean obviously if you're carrying cocked and locked, um, that's something that, you know, they do decock, which is fine, but I don't know, I'm not a big fan of just the bulk of them, but at their heart, I mean, for what they cost, they are a wonderful 9mm handgun and they can just really get the job done and, and they don't cost a lot, which is always a good thing for people wanting to save money. They're very capable guns. Well, I will say one thing about it. In some of the gun classes, I've taught women to shoot this gun and the, the axis of the bore is so high above the wrist, they limp wrist it and you can hang this gun up. Right. I took a man and woman to the range. I shot the gun, it functioned fine. He shot the gun, it functioned fine. She shot the gun and it, it, would, it, would, uh, it would malfunction about two rounds out of a magazine, but that's sure. because she didn't know how to hold it. But this has a real high center uh, uh, bore axis on it and it, it naturally you're going to get more flip with it. Yeah, you got to hold on uh, to them. But, uh, you know, we're just talking about these five guns. Now, there, there's all kind of nine millimeters out there. You've got uh, uh, kel you've got Rugers, you've got Smith & Wesson M&Ps, all the SIG 226s. There's a lot of nine millimeters out there, but we just wanted to show you a general, uh, this this one is external hammer. Right. This is striker fired. That's no striker, striker fired with a safety. So you get different <laughs> varieties here. But of these five guns, uh, uh, naturally, I'm going to pick the Glock 17. I would probably choose the CC75. That's just me, um, but okay. no, obviously not the Shark. But I'm not saying the Shark isn't a good gun. Mm -hmm. But I like CZ products. Now, um, there were several military pistols that we thought about, you know, putting into this this category. But we decided that we're going to do another video in the future just on military handguns right. because there's so many in nine millimeter. It's so hard to pick just one. So um, we're going to leave you with this. Um, hopefully, you found today's video informative. If you have any questions, just give us a call here at the shop. We can give you prices or give you an idea of what we have laying around. Or if you want to come by and check them out, feel free to do so. Um, we appreciate you guys watching today. And if you like this concept, let us know. We'll keep these videos coming. And uh, thanks for watching this evening. Thank you. All right.